You all have scary Nintendo hot takes that we'll be reacting to. Welcome to the Mario Matter, your favorite Nintendo podcast, episode number 84. We're inching closer to the 90 and even, would you say inching than like footing closer, like inches than feet, like footing closer to the 100 episode? No? Inching closer. We're inching closer to everything with the podcast, but how are we doing, guys? Welcome to the show. It's a fun, packed show, as always, like you come to expect. Unless you're a new viewer, then you might not expect much. But guys, here's the show for today. So as always, our first segment of the show dives into all Nintendo news from the past seven days. It's some juicy stuff. Guys, gotta stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, please. Please, okay? And then after that, we react to your Nintendo hot takes that you have left me. Listen, guys. I've, I've scrubbed through them. There's some spicy stuff in there, and I have some hot takes of my own, too. We'll dive into all of that, and then after that is all over, we'll answer your questions that, you, that you've that you asked me about Nintendo, about some about YouTube, some stuff like that. We even have your voicemails, so you have asked me questions through your voice in voicemails. All awesome stuff, and guys, I want to say one thing. So, quickly... I want to make this podcast more fun. I'm going to ask you a question at the beginning of the podcast right now, and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the podcast. So you have all of the episode to think about the answer to this question, okay? Here it is right now, answer at the end. Which is the best-selling Nintendo-made game of all time? Which game has Nintendo made that is the best-selling of all time? Think about it, and I'll tell you the answer later on, but with that said, if you want to see any part of the podcast, there are timestamps in the description, and a whole lot of other cool stuff in that description. Let's go ahead, let's get into all of the Nintendo news to kick off the podcast. I'm your host, Max, or M. Swizzle, by the way. I didn't even, I didn't even say that. All right, let's go, whatever. Welcome to the Mario Matter, the number one Nintendo podcast. Dude, it's been a while since I've like forgot to introduce myself. I mean, honestly, like, you know, I'm normally like pretty good about saying, hey guys, I am Max, you know, but uh, you know, you might not have known me. I'm going to assume that a lot of you listening are returning viewers and maybe know who I am. So maybe introductions aren't as necessary, but like hopefully we have someone new. If it, if, if you're a first time watcher, please comment. We we would like to know. But anyways, guys, this is the Nintendo news headline segment. And while that title for the segment is rather self-explanatory, I love to give the analogy that this segment is like watching a Nintendo Direct. You know when they say here are the headlines, and, they, and like they, they run through games. This is me. I'm running through the headlines, the brand new Nintendo news from the past week. So I'm recording this on April 12th at 11.08 a.m. I've began like recording podcasts earlier, and it's honestly like the best thing in the world, honestly. And uh, I post on April 13th. So we go from April 13th back to April, what's it, 13 minus 7, because 7 days. We go back to, I cannot do math, guys, April 5th? Yeah, so we have all the news from April 5th to April, I guess April 12th, because I'm not taking news from the 13th. Like, if they drop some breaking news on April 13th, I won't know, because I'm recording on Friday. Well, I mean, I'll know, but not today. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead. I have this little hat right here, and in this hat, I have a bunch of papers that uh, have news on them. So let's go ahead. Let's shake up the hat. Uh, our audio listeners can't really enjoy it, I guess, but... You you can you can kind of hear it, ready? You can kind of hear all the all the papers jiggling. All right, let's go ahead. Let's pick this one. What is it? Oh my gosh, guys! We could not have started with a spicier one. I I wouldn't say a better one because this isn't like good news for the people involved uh, or for the guy involved. But this is like a lot of you like this kind of stuff. So the headline reads: A man has been arrested. <laughs> <laughs> for selling hacked Pokemon Scarlet and Violet save data. So this news, I, I, I think it actually broke yesterday, this piece of news right here. I think this broke yesterday on Thursday. And so basically what happened was I'm just like scrolling, trying to find news for this podcast. Like like as anybody would, right? And so I'm, I'm like scrolling through. I find my news. I refresh. 
and I see this headline. I'm like, whoa, we struck a gold mine right here, okay? So let's go ahead, let's run through the details. So as we know, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out in November of 2022, long time ago. This guy thought it would be a great little side hustle. Actually, not a side hustle. This was his main way to make a living while he was doing it. He began selling hacked Pokemon data. So there's no specific details on what the data had, though you can probably assume it was a bunch of hacked Pokemon. Uh, you know, they, they have like infinite items, things like this. And I guess it went under the radar for a long time because he began selling this data in December of 2022 probably less than a month after the game released and they just now got him so here are the interesting details so he would hack the data and then he would sell each save file if you wanted to buy it for 90 dollars each which is by the way more than the game costs can we just get that out of the way and so hacking save data and selling it is illegal in japan is that illegal in the U.S., I don't know, but all that matters is this guy was in Japan, and that's illegal there. Now, the police think that he made millions of yen, which is, of course, Japanese currency, okay? And I did the math. If this guy was selling the Pokemon data, and police think that he made millions of yen, Japanese currency, I converted it, so if he made, let's just say, 1 million yen, he would have made $6,526. Now, let's say, now they say millions of yen. What if he made like 10 million yen? So let's do $6,500 times 10. If he made 10 million yen, he would have made $65,000. I should not, I should not have even needed to like calculate that. Dude, that's so obvious. <laughs> uh, but anyways, like this guy probably made some bank off of just selling Pokemon data. And it came out that he was doing this for a living like, to make his money for a living. Now he's arrested. So, it's hard to say that was worth it. Uh, hard to say if he knew that was illegal. But yeah, I mean, selling anything hacked, like, we've seen it before. Pretty much, if you sell anything that, that is hacked, like, Nintendo comes after you. Like, we saw the Gary Bowser guy uh, get locked up and has to pay, like, $10 million dollars to Nintendo because he was selling hacked Switch devices or whatever. Like, bro, don't sell nothing hacked. You you get caught real quick. And that's crazy because I think it was just last week, Nintendo arrested somebody else for threatening their event. Dude, they're on the freaking, I don't even know, arrest hunt. Like, bro, they're arresting everybody. All right, next, next headline. Guys, stay safe out there. Don't get caught. Our next piece of news is a big one. Yet a sad one, okay, guys? We had, we do have to discuss this. Listen, guys, do you know what happened? God, what day was it? April 8th? April, April, Monday, April 8th. The Wii U <laughs> and 3DS online servers shut down that day. Can you believe it? Could you see it coming? Probably not. Maybe. I mean, they announced it, so you probably saw it coming. But... This is sad, and I bring the news to you because there's a lot of debacles going on with the Wii U and 3DS online servers. So I do want to begin this segment. This segment is just like a bit of a kind of a recap of the Wii U online and like how things went on the actual like closing day for the servers. So let me tell a little story, and then we have a problem with this actually. By uh, it was reported by a user. There's a problem, a big problem with the Wii U and 3DS online shutting down. All right. Here we go. So my story with this was I, of course, like any other, you know, dedicated Wii U or 3DS fan was like, hey, I kind of want to play on the Wii U or 3DS before it shuts down and be there for the shutdown. Imagine playing Wii U at, you know, 7.59 and it closes at 8 p.m. You're there for the shutdown. That's so cool, right? So I wanted to do that. So my platform and game of choice to do that with was Splatoon for the Wii U. It was Splatoon. Uh, my, my favorite game of all time is Animal Crossing New Leaf. So you would think that I'm on that game. No, 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 no. I just wasn't. Splatoon was like another big part of my childhood. So I was like, you know what? Splatoon it is. So I get on there and I'm just playing matches. And what's so much fun 
is everyone in there would just get into a game and just start squid banging. Like, no one would attack each other. They would all just meet up. You would sometimes have, like, that 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 one guy who did not get the memo and would kill everyone. But, like, for, for the most part, you would get into the game and just squid bag in the middle of the arena. It was so dope, right? And so I think that the servers, if I'm not wrong, were supposed to close at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Apparently, they didn't. So people were still able to get in until 8 p.m. Eastern, which was, I guess, the final closing time. Because I, I guess someone made a typo. They didn't actually close at 7. I don't know what happened, but they were open until 8, okay? So I get until the, I get to the, to, the, to the closure at 8 p.m., right? I'm playing Splatoon at 8 p.m. I tried to be in the final Splatoon match ever. So I queued up at like 7, 7.59. I queued up, right? And so I get in there. We're all squid bagging. The game ends, and I'm literally still connected to the Nintendo network servers, even after closure. Like, I was still on their servers. It was like the weird, I'm like, how am I still online? And so it kind of came out that they were like shutting down things gradually, so it wouldn't all happen at one time. It was just like, they would slowly shut down. So I, I just kept on playing for like two more hours, like waiting for it to kick me out. And it never, ever, ever kicked me out. So at 10 p.m., the maps changed, and I was still able to keep on playing. I never, ever got kicked out of Nintendo Network Services. Now, obviously now I am, but I never like got the error like, hey, online service is down or maintenance is going on, you know? I never, I never got that. So yeah, 10 p.m. comes. I'm like, all right, screw this. I'm not staying on forever. And I think everyone got kicked out at like 2 a.m. or something. So I was not staying up for that four more hours for some Splatoon just to be kicked out. No, I wasn't with that. But I've already installed Pretendo and I have. Dude, my freaking Wara Wara Plaza, like the me, uh, the uh, Wii U Plaza, works. Like, dude, there's actual Miiverse posts in there. That's so cool. Uh, yeah, I, I did pay the 10 bucks a month to Pretendo uh, for the online servers. So... It's, it's pretty cool. And I've, I've played some new Splatoon matches. Dude, people are still active on uh, per, on the Pretendo Wii U servers. It's so it's so cool, dude. So, yeah, I've been doing that. Now, guys, there comes a problem. And I thought this would be a problem when the eShop closed because what I'm about to tell you is a problem with seemingly the eShop, not the online servers. So, I was sent a Reddit post by user... T Joe B or T Joeb one two three on Reddit, and it's a long post, but it makes sense. It's a kind of a weird problem, so it warrants a long post. But I'll summarize it for you. Basically, user T Joeb one two three has discovered and reported that some DLC on the 3DS can no longer be re-downloaded. Now you might think. Max, the eShop shut down. Of course, you can't redownload it. No, 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 no. Nintendo said, and this makes sense. Like, you should be able to do this. They said that if you bought something and you, like, you know, maybe delete it for more storage on your system, you can still, like, redownload it at a later point, right? No. So, t Joab had a bunch of DLC. They tested, like, five or six games. The only one that they could not redownload right now is Smash Bros. for 3DS. So, if you had Smash Bros. DLC and you cleared it off, you erased it to make more storage on your 3DS, you might not be able to re-download it as of right now. I think that's something that will be fixed in a matter of days, because, you know, Nintendo is not the, the type to say, you can re-download it, and then, like, if there's a problem where someone cannot re-download something, they just won't do something about it. Like, they will they will do something with that. I think, I think that it'll be fixed. But that's a weird problem. You can download, like six of your DLCs, but one doesn't work. Now, I don't know if that's on purpose. I, I don't think it is. If it is, and you know, that's, it, it's it's real. You cannot re-download Smash DLC. I don't think that's an intentional thing. I think that's like, uh, oops, we messed up. If it is intentional, that sucks. I would just say download it otherwise, wink, wink. But yeah, kind of weird. eShop debacles going on, okay? Nothing for the Wii U, I don't believe as of now is wrong. But just like as an overall cap on this Wii U and 3DS thing, dude, when like the servers were shutting down, there was, my heart was sinking. Like, like whoa, like this is really it. 
But thankfully, Pretendo Network, which if you don't know, I should give some context, is a fan-run service where they are reviving the Wii U and 3DS online. So if you download the Pretendo mod on your Wii U or 3DS, you can now play online again if you pay the good 10 bucks a month, which I think it'll be free in the future. But as of right now, you get you you got to pay like 10 bucks. Um, actually, no, they released a free way to connect to their servers. If you change your DNS settings, you can now connect to Pretendo and play online again. I don't know how stable it is, and I don't know if it works for every single game, but that is out there. It, it actually is, in a sense, free. It doesn't it doesn't fix Miiverse, doesn't fix you know your Plaza on the Wii U, but it does work for some things. So maybe you 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 know go that route. You know that's always awesome. Whoa, -ho -ho, my camera just turned off because it was hot, but now it's back on. We're back recording. All right, guys. Next piece of Nintendo news. See, guys, when I try to when I try to record this podcast in 4K, camera says, "Oh, it's too hot." Camera's too hot, you know? I don't know why, you know, I don't know. 1080p is great. All right, our next piece of news, guys. Okay, guys, this can get really messy, so I really want to uh, prepare you all for what I'm about to say. Not messy on my end. Messy on the end of Sega. Yes, this is a Nintendo podcast reporting on Sega. Why is that? Because a lot of Mario fans also like Sonic, so it's good to know. Sega announces... <laughs> when when Sega announces anything, you're bro, it's either really good or really bad. Sega announces that 2024 is the year of shadow. Max, what is wrong with that? So, the year of shadow is I guess they've declared 2024 to be the year of shadow. And we've seen that. We've seen them announce Sonic X Shadow gen uh, Generations that comes to Switch later this year. And pretty much the entire year will not just be Shadow, but like they're going to have a focus on Shadow. So they're going to run Shadow events in game. So for example, they're going to do Shadow Lego sets. They're, 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 they're going to have Shadow events in mobile games like Sonic Dash and Sonic Forces Mobile. They're going to have a, the uh, Sonic Speed Cafe in California will offer Shadow items and merchandise. The entire year has a big spotlight on Shadow. Max, what's the problem with that? The problem with that, <laughs> which is not a big problem. So, Nintendo did a very similar thing. <laughs> where they declared, I believe, 2013. I think it was 13. They declared 2013 the year of Luigi. <laughs> and the year of the, the, the year of Luigi was the worst year ever. Not ever. Like one of the like like the worst years for Nintendo ever. I made a YouTube short about this like so long ago, where I think that they somehow lost like three hundred million dollars. Let's let's look year of Luigi. I made a short. What did? How much money did they lose off of it? Did I did I say? Yeah, four hundred fifty six million dollars. So I'm not trying to signify anything here. But if history means anything to you, I think, you know, I'm not trying to say Sega's going to lose $400 million. I'm just saying, like, the year of blank, year of Luigi, year of Shadow, the year of whoever is cursed. It's cursed, and year of Shadow, of course, when I when, when they announced it, and people like me, or, and, you know, some, some Twitter people, the first thing that they could think of was year of Luigi was a, was a flop. This is bad. So, do I think that Year of Shadow is going to be bad? No, I don't. I'm just saying it's funny. Because the whole Year of Luigi thing. Uh, the Sonic X Shadow Generations game. I think everyone's pretty hyped for that. Like, that's that's a good... Sonic, Sonic Generations getting any sort of remaster, remake, I don't know what it is, is awesome. You love that game. I think. I love it. It's great. And to have Shadow in there is, is like, more content, right? So, I think it's well-received so far for what we're getting for, quote-unquote, the Year of Shadow. But, yeah, as I said, Lego sets, events in mobile games, Sonic Speed Cafe. There's a lot of Shadow stuff coming your way. Very, very cool. Let's get back to our Nintendo news headlines. Let's read. Dude, when, I, when my camera died, like, it, it, it didn't die, but, like, it said, camera's too hot. I, I was, like, so scared. It scared me because, like, you know, you don't, want, you don't want it to happen during a podcast. But here we go. 
New Nintendo Switch Online icons have released, and I have a rant about these, okay? So, Max, they released new icons. Why are you going to go on a rant? What's the problem? I will get to that. Okay, so here's the thing. Normally, I have never had a problem with this piece of news. However, Nintendo has done something that I do not like. So, there are new icons online or, or on Switch Online, and here are all of them. They have changed a lot of them out. So, if you're listening near the release date, so Saturday, you can go check. They have the final wave of Princess Peach Showtime icons available now. They have Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island icons, Mario Kart 8 icons, Mario Wonder icons, Mario Odyssey icons, Mario 3D World icons, and Animal Crossing icons. What problem could I possibly have with any of those, right? So, I wanted to redeem some of the Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island icons. They look very cool. I believe they might not be anymore, but I think that the last wave of them were like hand-drawn art. It was like really cool icons, so I, I wanted them. So I go to try to buy them for 10 platinum points each, and it tells me, and you might know where I'm going with this, it, it, it tells me that I have to play the game three times on three different days within 30 days before I can buy any of them. Guys, I have not beat Super Mario World 2. It was before my time. I am not as old as a lot of you think that I am. I just never like went back to that game, right? Let's say that I already beat that game. Why on earth do I have to play that game three times within, within 30 different days? And by the way, they're very spe like very hard about it. So you it has to be three different days, three times in the month, like 24 hours apart. So you can't open it at... 11.58 p.m. and then 12 a.m. and it's, you know, two different days. It has to be 24 hours apart. Why do I have to play the game to get the icons? Say that I beat Mario World 2, right? Yoshi's Island. What, why do I have to go back to that game? If I already beat it hypothetically, why do you make me have to replay the game just so I can get some icons? Listen, I understand it makes you play old games again. I totally get that part. But maybe just, like, play it once or, or like, do a challenge in the game. Beat level one. I can do that. Well, I don't want to have to, like, start it up on three different days in the month just to maybe get some icons. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I'm not... Here's the thing. It, 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 works, better. it works better for franchises like Splatoon. Where Splatoon is, like, an infinite... There, there's, there's no end... I mean, for story mode, there is. But you, you can play Turf War all day. With Super Mario World 2, like, what are you doing if you already beat the game? You're just going to go play it again? I mean, maybe, but, like, that's that's not f a great fun. I don't know. It's a great game, but just replaying. Like, Mario Wonder is the exact same deal. I beat that game last October. As of now, I don't really have any interest in going back to the game just to get some icons. I, I really don't care. I, I don't want to go play it again. Why do you make us do this? I get for some games. Some games, sure. Like, like you know, Splatoon, as I said. I can go play Turf Wars on three different days in a month. That's fine. But who is really replaying Mario Wonder, Mario 3D World, uh, Mario Odyssey? Animal Crossing is a game that you can do that with. Because there's unlimited things to do every single day. It's just the other ones I feel I, I feel don't work. Because if you beat them, why go back sort of thing, you know? Uh, I don't like it. Maybe Now, listen, I understand they want more engagement with those older games and want to encourage you to go back to those. I get it, but I, I don't like it. I'll stop talking, but yeah, I don't like it. But those are all available if you do want to go and get them. You do have to play games to unlock them. But yeah, I mean, you know. It would be better if they were, like, more current games, but whatever. Here's a spicy piece of news for you all. Amazon. Ever heard of them? Cancels pre-orders for upcoming Nintendo Switch games. So, it's pretty self-explanatory here. If you have pre-ordered one of these three games, go to your Amazon and check to see if they have canceled your pre-order because they have done this a lot, and I think it's kind of weird. So, if you have pre-ordered... One, Endless Ocean Luminous. Two, what I imagine a lot of you have pre-ordered, Paper Mario with a Thousand Year Door. Or three, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. 
If you have pre-ordered any of those games, go check your Amazon to see if they cancel your pre-order. They might not have because obviously they aren't they aren't they aren't, they aren't going to cancel every single pre-order, but they, they they've done a lot of them. Go check to see if they cancel your pre-order. I don't know if they just put them out there and didn't expect the rush of pre-orders, like like they thought they would have more than you know people would would order. I don't know what the deal was. But, yeah, they've been canceling things left and right. So, thank God I don't order from Amazon. The best place, guys, as much as I don't want to say this, if you're in America or have a GameStop near you, GameStop is by far the best place to pre-order. And I don't love saying that just because, like, GameStop has done me wrong in the past. Like, they have just... It's it's kind of petty, but, like, they've said, buy one new game, get a, get one new game totally free. I do it, and I get used games in the mail. Like, it's a, it's a scam, right? That's that's kind of petty, but I don't like that. So, for that reason, I don't like GameStop. But they are the most reliable with pre-orders. I will give them that. Uh, online pre-orders? No. Order in store, please. I did one online pre-order, didn't get it for three days later. But <laughs> in-store pre-orders can never go wrong. I've never had one bad in-store pre-order experience with GameStop. I would I would recommend them for that. Nothing else, though, to be honest. And then, guys, next piece of Nintendo news, our second to last piece. Nintendo Switch. New Switch Online games have been released. I butchered that. It was, it was, okay, okay, listen. It was, it was supposed to be new Nintendo Switch Online games released, but I turned it into like Nintendo Switch, new Switch Online games released. Guys, I can't read, okay? So, <laughs> here we go. New Nintendo Switch Online games. These dropped last night as of me recording. Nintendo loves dropping random things on like Thursday nights. They've done it multiple times, like just dropping stuff on Thursday. I don't know why Thursday. I guess because that's like Friday in Japan, Thursday night. So uh, Friday is your release day. I kind of get it. You know, it, it, it makes more sense as I'm saying it to myself right now. But they've put out three new games. Number one, Wrecking Crew 98. Number two, you're going to have to excuse my pronunciation here amazing hebereki he hebereki one of those right that's up there and then also super r type now i actually failed to grab the console so wrecking crew is on i believe the nes and amazing hebereki let's just go with that uh, pronunciation that says also the nes well it says super no 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 that that says snes no, I think that they're both SNES things. Okay, sorry. They're both SNES. And then what is Super R-Type? The last game is called Super R-Type, and that is also a SNES game. So they're all, according to my 30-second research, SNES games. So, I mean, that's that's at least better than, than NES games. NES is awesome, right? But, like, you know, SNES has more flavor, undoubtedly. So no no negatives here, right? That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and close those tabs because my computer is loud all of a sudden. Guys, if my computer crashes, today is not going to be a fun day. Then we have one more piece of news, guys, to close out the Nintendo news headlines. And wow, is it a spicy one. So, we've recently... Why is my computer so loud? We've recently covered that Nintendo struck down the Yuzu emulator for Nintendo Switch, right? So, you can... An emulator is, you know, you, you, can, you, you, can, you can play Switch games on your computer. They don't like that. So now, Discord, the, you know, big chatting app, has struck down two more Nintendo Switch emulators Discord servers. So, if you don't know what Discord is, I'm surprised. But basically, it's an app where you can chat to other people online, as most apps allow you to do. And you can have your own server where, like, if I'm really into... My my YouTube channel, M Swizzle, right? You can join the M Swizzle Discord server and meet other people also interested in that own topic. There's one for like probably YouTube. There's there's one for like podcast. Like there's a server for everything, right? So there were servers for these two emulators, and these emulators are called Suyu, who we have covered on the podcast, and Sudachi, who I'd never even heard of. Suyu and Sudachi are two different emulators. And Discord took both of their servers down. And 
the lead developers for both of, of those emulators had their accounts totally disabled. So here's the thing. There's a lot to unpack there. Do we think that Nintendo had them do that? Well, there's no evidence right now that, that leads to that. But, yeah, I mean, because of that, I'd probably say, I don't know. That's kind of a weird thing to, to strike down all of a sudden. I would say no, because there could have been things, and I'm not in those servers, so I don't know. But there could have been things, probably not, but like maybe. There, there, there could have been people sharing, you know, piracy links and things like that. And that is against, I believe, Discord TOS. You can't share, hey, guys, download this ROM online. You can't do that. So maybe there was some of that going on. I don't know for sure. I'm just like speculating. Maybe there was that. Maybe there were some other things, you know, against TOS. Who knows what it was? Maybe they broke some rules, told you how to do some things that, you know, they shouldn't have told you how, told you how to do. Who knows what it was, right? But the, but the fact of the matter is the servers shut down. Lead developers had their accounts disabled. I... 50-50, honestly, if Nintendo had any involvement. I don't... Because Discord can do their own things. Take down a service that don't, you know, align with their terms of service. I don't know. Weird, though. However, both of those emulators... I shouldn't say this, but, like, both of them are still running. So, you know, if you want them... I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, I can't encourage piracy on YouTube, but, you know... If we were at a park on a bench and you asked me about piracy... Different story! All right, you guys! Let's go ahead. That is it for the Nintendo News Headlines segment. Alrighty, guys. Now it is time. It's hot in this freaking room. Which means it's time for some Nintendo hot takes. I asked you all at 7 a.m. this morning because I did not have a topic in mind for this podcast. <laughs> I always have one big topic, and that's the title of the podcast. I didn't. I, I kind of had one, which might be next week's, um, but I thought, let's react to your hot takes. So, you all have submitted to me the spiciest hot takes in all the land. I have five of the spiciest, and we will react to them. Do I agree with them? Do I agree with these hot takes? Do I disagree? Are they terrible? Are, are they spicy? What's going on? With these five Nintendo hot takes, you have told me. Let's go ahead, let's react. Guys, whenever the topic of Nintendo hot takes comes up, this can go one of two ways. Either you agree with all of them, or you don't agree with any of them, okay? There's never really an in-between. I might have just found some in-betweens. Like, these hot takes are, like, out of the world. And then they kind of come back to, like, these are so divisive, we need to discuss. So, I asked you all for Nintendo hot takes. Tell me your, your, your hot takes. And if you don't know what a hot take is, it's just, like, a controversial take. Like, something that you believe, such as, we sports sucked. I don't believe that. But, for example, that's a hot take. Because a lot of people like Wii Sports. It's a take that you have that not everyone agrees with. So, I've gathered your spicy ones, and we shall discuss, beginning, because we don't want to waste your time, beginning with Zach Curdy, who is actually a channel member. Thank you so much. They, they say, their, their hot take is, all DLC should be free, considering games are $60 now. Here's our first hot take, guys. So, he, and now, now we like dissect it, we, we break it down. This is very fun. Should DLC not cost any kind of money because the games are 60 bucks? Let's think. You know, when it comes to DLC for anything, whether it's Zelda, Animal Crossing, whatever it is, I think it's a lot of it has to do with the fans because we, let's say that Animal Crossing is everyone's favorite game on planet Earth. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's someone's favorite game of all time. Let's say, you know, Animal Crossing is someone's favorite game. If Nintendo opts to add more content, you're gonna pay the money. And that's the problem. Listen, if we as a community just boycotted DLC, you probably wouldn't see it a lot. But just because it sells, and this could be a, a, a hot take in itself, like what I'm saying. Because DLC sells, they're gonna keep on doing it. And I'm not saying that we should boycott DLC or, you know, don't buy it. I'm just saying, like... 
As long as people buy DLC and it makes them enough money to make the work worthwhile, they're never going to stop and they're always going to charge for it. So, <sighs> game prices have gone up. Some are even like 70 now. In, in I don't know. Ugh. If you buy a 60, 60, okay, if a game costs 60 bucks, and normally for Nintendo, the DLC is 25, you get an $85 game right there. Uh, 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 that's so, I don't know, man. I mean, there's like games that are 60 that don't have much content, and then there's games that are 60. It, it depends on the game. I think, I think that DLC should still be a thing. Yeah, it should be a thing, and it should still cost... It should remain how it is. Because I guess, you know, game prices have to shift it up to $60. And I, if you want more content out of it, it should cost money because you're paying for more... I don't know. It just makes sense to me. I don't think that they can give all that away. Because if, like, Splatoon 3, for example, had Turf War, Salmon Run, a Story Mode... The, the freaking card game in side order, you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot for your $60. If Animal Crossing had Happy Home Paradise built in, bro, that's like a whole separate game. That's a lot of content, which would be awesome, but I don't realistically think any game developer or company would want to do that. So I'm going to say they should cost money just because it's often a lot of content. Then our next hot take... One that I have quite the take on comes from at Good Games on YouTube. And they and they say, I'm always used to saying like, and they ask because of the answering your question segment. They say, short one, the Wii U is the best Nintendo console. Guys, what do we think? Now, I know not everyone has a Wii U. But, uh, you know, this is a Nintendo podcast and I assume a lot of you know what the Wii U is. And and there's some that, that, that won't, right? But the Wii U, basically just the sequel console to the Wii. It's like Switch 2, but it's Wii U. That Switch 2, Wii U, that, that totally rhymes. That's sick, by the way. So, we have Wii U, the best console ever. Now, the reason why a lot of people say that, that the Wii U is the best Nintendo console is because there was a charm to it. That the, 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 the whole Switch doesn't have. If you have a Wii or a Wii U, maybe even a GameCube, honestly, maybe a GameCube or a 3DS, you would know that the, the, the menus of the console just had this charm. It had this great charm. And I would say, honestly, that the Wii U is the best example. It has a home menu song, so when you're on the home menu, it plays a song, which is nostalgic as heck. You have a bunch of me's running around on the plaza on your TV. That's so cool. And it just has this upbeat vibe. The eShop has music. And because of that, of that personality in the nostalgia, people love to say it's the best console. I mean, among many other reasons. Like, the games were great. Yes, the, the Wii U had some of the best Nintendo games. And if you disagree, why are most of them on Switch? Because they were just that freaking good. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, Mario 3D World. There's a bunch of others that I can't think of. Mario Kart, Mario Kart 8 was on the Wii. Like, if that's not a good game, I don't know what is. You know? So, in a, in a way, it can really stand as a contender for the best Nintendo console. And guess what, guys? For my take on this hot take, I am in full agreement with good games on YouTube. The Wii U is my favorite Nintendo console. I just said that. Now, why is that? I would say, number one, to be very, very fair, I grew up with, with the Wii U. So when I was 7, 8, 9, 10, the Wii U was like in its prime stages. So I grew up with it and I feel that the console and I've said this I've I've said I've said this many times. The console that you grow up with I feel is like the one that you love a lot. Everyone talks about when they got that Wii for Christmas when when they were 8 or that or that Xbox 1 when they were 10. Like that's the console that you know and remember. 
I got a Wii U for Christmas. What do you think my reaction was? I loved it. And so that, that carries with you to the to this day. But there was something about the console itself that made me love it more than Switch. Because obviously, most of the time while you're playing a game console, you're playing games. You're, you're playing, you know, your Splatoon, your Mario, whatever. You're not on the home menu very much. But something about the entire console just had the most charm I've ever felt in any console ever. Because it's not even just the music or the Miis in the plaza. It's not even just that. It's the, it's the gamepad. With the gamepad, which was a whole separate tablet with the Wii U, there were so many games that took great advantage of the gamepad, like Nintendo Land, like Game & Wario, like so many different other games that take great advantage of that little tablet. The console was just the most creative and upbeat, charming thing. And now Nintendo has kind of gone into like this corporate home menu where it's like, you know, just get to where you need to be. Like, there's an eShop button, click it. There's no music, but it kind of works, right? You know, the home screen has no song, but it's good enough. It gets you to where you need to be, right? And some people like that better because, yes, admittedly, the Wii U took forever to load anything and sometimes didn't load things. So, in a way, it's better. But I don't really... I, I might honestly sacrifice a long loading time for more system menu charm. That's a big debate. Would you rather have more charm on the home menu, but things take longer to, to load? Or would, would you rather have less charm, but things are fast? I don't know. That's kind of a tough one, to be honest, because everything on a Wii U had a big loading screen. I'll stop talking now, but uh, I, I think that the Wii U is probably the best Nintendo console in my eyes. I, I would say that. Yeah, I agree there. Then Top Banana 729 on YouTube says, Nintendo Switch Sports is pretty good. I have a friend who loves to play badminton and bowling with me, and grinding for online rank and cosmetics is a decently fun loop. Now, guys, my take on this used to be it's been a roller coaster. I'll say that to kind of sum it up. When the game first came out, I was so hyped for it. I was like, yes, we're getting Nintendo Switch Sports. And a big thing to criticize right when the game came out was its lack of sports. Obviously, you have six sports there, but you don't have boxing or baseball from the previous Wii Sports game, right? People didn't like that. But they did replace some of those things, like boxing was replaced with Chambara, right? So there were some things to criticize it for, but I was so hyped. I played it for so long after it first came out. And then what happened is when I just... How do I work? When we were told that a free update would be coming out, which includes golf, I was kind of optimistic the entire year. Like, yeah, we're probably going to get like boxing in some maybe DLC form or basketball or something crazy, right? And it just never came. And I think that was the turning point where I was like, man, you only gave us golf. Not to mention them giving us golf was delayed. <laughs> I mean, what are you doing? And it, I just felt very sour to the game at that point. I felt very sour, like, uh, like, that's it? After all this time? Yes, you're giving us great outfits and great cosmetics and cool stuff, but, like, such a downgrade from Wii Sports. And so I literally thought that way until, like, a month ago. Guys, I picked up Nintendo Switch Sports again in 2024 in, I think, early, late March or so. And I had a freaking blast. It's not even funny. I had a blast. Because I stopped playing Switch Sports consistently after about a month or two after re release. I played here and there afterwards, but not every week trying to get all the items. No, no, no. I didn't. So I came back to it, and I was like, man, not looking for updates that don't exist like when you're not trying to think oh man would have been so much better with boxing it's a really fun game i played for like maybe six seven eight hours over 
two weeks, which isn't a crazy amount of time, but a lot for me, someone who didn't really play Switch Sports all year until this little playing session that I had. I played for like eight hours over two weeks. The game is a lot of fun when you're not thinking about what it's missing. My favorite is the soccer mode. I love that. And then even just things like, as Top Banana said, who submitted this, this hot take, things like the online rank. I became top rank in the soccer mode and the, uh, and the, and the cosmetics that change every single week. Guys, there's so many. There's like 52 outfit sets, one for every week of the year. That's, that's a lot of content. That is a lot. So you have that to look forward to. There's three available at one time. So you, like, you keep on grinding. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's great when you look back on it. It wasn't as great when I thought we would, we would get more content than we did. And so for that, I agree. Switch Sports is pretty good. And you might think, Max, Switch Sports sold like 9 million copies. Isn't it kind of widely considered good? Maybe, but I've seen a lot of people bash Switch Sports, and and I was totally, I was totally a hundred percent a part of that. But I gave it a try, and I was like, man, this game is pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty fun, right? So I did a one eighty on it, and I think yes, Switch Sports is pretty good, despite all the hate that you see online. Everyone has their has their opinion, but that's what I believe. And then Z D J S S K I T S is their username. They submit the hot take, which has five likes. People agree with this. Modding a 3DS is harder than people make it seem. Now, this is a bit more of a niche topic. If you've not modded your 3DS, basically people mod their 3DS to do things like revive the online servers, servers, not servers, I'm not sure what I said, servers, or get custom themes on their 3DS, or to do other things that are not exactly legal, or things like, like that, right? And the process to mod your 3DS is not as easy. If you've ever modded a Wii, it's not that easy. And yeah, once again, niche topic, but I can kind of walk you through. So in order to hack your 3DS, you go to this website, like preferably called, I think it's called 3DS Hacks Guide or whatever, and you follow the process step by step. However, a lot of people make it seem like, yeah, just mod your 3DS, you know? There are some hurdles. There are definitely some hurdles. So I once made a YouTube short saying, how fast can I hack a Wii? Most viewed thing I've ever done on the internet. I think it has like 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 25 million views or whatever, right? So I did that. Not sorry, not 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 to flex. It's just context, right? So I was gonna follow that up by doing how fast can I hack a 3ds, right? Bro, it's kind of hard. <laughs> it it actually is kind of hard. So with the Wii one, it was so easy because all you do to hack a Wii, go to your Wii settings, find this number, put this number into a website, download some files from said website put it onto an SD card and open your Wii like letter section and then click a button. That's all you do and, and it's hacked. With 3DS, man, there are some freaking like loops that you have to jump through a lot of the time. So following step-by-step -step instructions are not hard. It's not very hard most of the time, right? But some things go wrong. You forget to copy some files. Something just didn't work because of, the, of this one random piece of data that you have on, on your 3DS that like you, you just can't have. It's kind of confusing when you actually try and do it. Not to mention, if you're doing advanced things like you bought a Japanese 3DS and you're trying to convert over to the American region, that's scary. That was bad. I had to, to, to do that and it was decently easy, but it was like... I, I wanted to make sure I, I knew what I was doing and that was kind of hard for me. Like I didn't know exactly, okay, is this for sure right? Like do I definitely do this? So in that regard, it was kind of hard. That rhymes. It's definitely a, a lot harder than people make it seem, but in the grand scheme, dude, I'm rhyming today. It's not that bad. You can probably do it in under an hour. It's not that hard, but it's harder than people. Oh yeah, just mod your 3DS. It's a lot harder than, 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 than that. So I do give you that. I do agree. It's harder than people make it seem. Finally, 
Nintendo Fan 92, very, very broad hot take here. The greatest series Nintendo ever made was the Wii series. Wii Sports, Wii Fit. It's better than Mario, Zelda, and Animal Crossing. Wow. All right. So, let's break this down. We had things like Wii Sports, Wii Party, Wii Fit, Wii Play, Wii Music. All these Wii games. Wii this, Wii that, Wii Sports Resort. And Nintendo fan thinks it is the greatest series they ever made. I, I for sure think it's one of them. It's one of them. My only counterpoint, because while that series is great, it had all those me's in there, it was great for its time. My only rebuttal is where is that nowadays? And obviously, that series shouldn't exist. It's called the Wii series. It should be on the Wii. I get it, right? But the great franchises are your Mario's and your Zelda's. If they really wanted to continue making games like that, called Wii This, Wii That, you would think the natural evolution, you can't sell a Wii game on a Switch, so you would name it Switch Party, Switch Sports, which they, they, they did that one, uh, Switch Music, Switch Fit. Like, you would think that they use the Switch name if that series is, you know, good. You name it Wii This, you and then you move to Switch, you, you name it Switch This, right? I don't think that formula works. If they came out with Switch Music and, you know, Switch Fit, which, I mean, they did Ring Fit, but, like, still. Switch this, switch that. I don't think it's as optimal as making things like Ring Fit Adventure, you know? That's kind of Wii Fit without being Wii Fit, right? It gets you in shape. It has an accessory, which can be compared to the, to the Wii Balance Board. You have, like, you have the Ring Con, but... I think if it was really optimal for them to go back to the series where they name games after the console, so switch this, switch that, I think they would do that. I think that they now realize making separate games, you know, has more juice than making every game start with the same word, we. Make separate games that embody these elements, but are separate. So, what I'm saying here... Sorry, is that I don't think the Wii series is the greatest series because if it was, that would still be around. They would be naming things Switch Party, Switch This. They aren't. So sorry if that was freaking complicated, but I I, I knew what I was saying. I don't know. So that's my take. I don't want. Well, listen, I love the Wii series, but it's not the greatest of all time. I apologize, but. That's what I think about your Nintendo hot takes. We can for sure do this segment again. If you all ever want to hear me break down some hot takes again, we can do this like, you know, I probably wouldn't make this the main title of the, of the podcast in the future. But like, even if we did a segment where, you know, let's say Switch 2 gets, gets you know, revealed, I would do the main segment being Guys, switch to. But before that, I can do reacting to your hot takes. You know, I can do it again. So let me know if you do want to see it again. But with that said, let's get to your favorite segment of the week, the answering your questions segment where I answer your questions you have asked me. Let's skadoodle. My friends, you know what time it is. It is the time to answer your questions that you have asked me. So I posted on my YouTube community tab, hey guys, ask me questions, blah, blah, blah. And you all did just that. You asked me questions. So how do you submit a question for me to answer? Well, I just kind of explained it. So every single Wednesday, I post on my YouTube community tab, hey guys, ask me questions, go. And so I'll leave a link down below in the description, it's called sources and links. Click that link, it'll take you to a place with more links, and click on the link that says M Swizzle's community tab. Or if you're watching on YouTube, go to my main channel called M Swizzle and check on the you know community tab every single Wednesday. It will be there. I take questions there, as that is the place where I have most of the questions. Most of my audience is over there, so I take them from there, and here we are. Now, there is an option to submit to voicemail questions where you can ask me a question 
where you go to the site in the in the description and say, "Hey there, I've I've been watching the show for nine years, and I I really wanted to know, you know, you say that you like Animal Crossing New Leaf a lot, but where does New Leaf stand in in every Animal Crossing game? What do you rank New Leaf? You can ask whatever you want, and I like when you all give some background. Like I've been listening for this long, you know, da 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 da. I'm I'm. James from Hawaii, you know, like whatever you want, you know. So we have two voicemails to run through. Then we have also written questions from the community tab. But guys, if you are a channel member, a Swizzle Prime channel member, link down below to sign up, you get your question guaranteed to be answered, which is very awesome sauce, if I must say so myself. That is linked down below. You must be a Swizzle Prime member. With that said, here we go. Let's hear our first voicemail from Evolution Master. Let's hear it. Who is a channel member, by the way? So, thank you, thank you for being a channel member. Let's hear it. Hey, Swizzle, it's Corey, otherwise known as Evolution Master, and I was just wondering. When did you start your YouTube channel, and what was one of the very first things you started, you posted? Mm, so I began this channel, technically, not this podcast channel, because I have two, one for the podcast, one for my, 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 my main stuff. I began the main channel, technically, in 2015, but I didn't upload, I just, like, had this channel, I guess. I began to post... You know, I've had ups and downs. I posted, like, some things in 2016, like some FIFA stuff. Those are all gone now. But I really began posting in March of 2020 when Animal Crossing came out. And the first videos that I made were, like, how to catch this fish in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Where I would say, guys, this fish comes out at 9 p.m. at night. Uh, you, you, can, you can get it in a river. And... It's only available in the month of April. You know, things like that. Because I was playing Animal Crossing in March of 2020, like, like a ton of people were. And I was like, man, how do I catch these fish? So I googled a YouTube tutorial, and I found someone doing it. And no offense, but he just like, he, he, he like wasn't... <sighs> Can I say that he sucked? Sorry, sorry. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't great. So I was like, man... He has like 100,000 views. I can do the exact same thing but better and hopefully, you know, ride the view train. So I did. It didn't get 100,000 views, but my first video ever is how to catch a goldfish in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Uh, my first video that is still up. My first like ever made video. I don't even know. Because I was like 8 years old using Windows Movie Maker. So I don't know what the first thing that I ever made was, but that's the first thing on my M Swizzle YouTube channel that is still up. So yeah, that's how I kind of got my real start. Once again, I had done some things like like in 2016, quit after like a month, you know. So my real start was March of 2020. We have one more voicemail from Alpaca. Let's hear it. Hello, I'm Alpaca. I've been listening for a few months now, and I would like to ask, what is your favorite genre of game? Yeah. I'm Alpaca. See you later. Hey, thanks, Alpaca. I appreciate it. So my favorite genre. Genre? Is it is it genre or is it genre? Like John or genre? I don't know, guys, but my favorite genre of games. I don't know if this is like a mainstream genre, but... My favorite kind of game that I can describe to you is cozy games. I don't know if there's a genre genre for cozy games, but that's what I like a lot, you know? So, a cozy game, which I hate that word, but that's just what it's called. I don't like calling any game a cozy game. Like, what is a cozy game? Do you snuggle up with a blanket and get like a hot coffee like what is a cozy game i don't know but a relaxing game some examples would be animal cross new horizons dinkum stardew valley things like that i love those kinds of sweet game is that cozy i don't know i, I don't want to call it that but like things like that th games that you can wind down with now in the same breath i like ufc5 a fighting game 
When is the last, guys, I'm the only person that you'll ever meet that likes cozy games and fighting games. <laughs> like, this is insane. So, I like sports games. I frequent FIFA, or I guess EA Sports FC 24 is the, is the new title of it. I frequent that. I frequent UFC 5. Guys, if you are at all into UFC, well, first of all, this Saturday is UFC 300, so you're excited. Uh, but... Buy UFC 5. That game is fun. Just be aware of playing online because people are toxic. There's no game chat, but guys, I'll be playing UFC 5. And let's say that I, I get like knocked down, right? In a fight. In the game. The guy starts like emoting on me. I'm like, oh, just you wait. I knock him out and I just start emoting like crazy. It's so toxic, but it like, dude, it gives you this, this thrill. So I apologize if I've ever played anyone listening. Uh, in UFC 5, I probably emoted the heck out of you. <laughs> yeah, but I like to keep it respectful. I only emote when you emote first. So otherwise, I touch gloves, which is like, you know, respect. I, I always say good fight and respect after the fights. But if you emote me first, dude, you're going down. So I would always just like, just emote like crazy after I win. It was insane. Dude, I love UFC 5. But favorite genre, cozy games. Then Can Den, who is also a member, asks, favorite outfit in Mario Odyssey? I have to pull those up, because I honestly forget. I'll know it when I see it, because it's been seven years since I've played Odyssey. I played it once when it came out, and that was it. Ma uh, Mario Odyssey outfits. Let's see. Yeah, so we have normal Mario, we have Captain, Boxer Shorts. Uh, oh, I like the uh, aviator thing, the aviator outfit. I like that. Uh, oh, the black fedora and the black suit. Not bad either. Uh, the Mario Maker outfit's kind of cool. I think I would go... Oh, the chef hat, the clown, the cowboy, the explorer, the football. <gasps> I think I'm going with the football one, to be honest. I think that the football helmet and, and, the, and the uniform. I know that I liked using that when I was playing back then. I think that's my answer. The football outfit and the football helmet. I love that. Uh, American football, by the way, not soccer. Carter Sports 4 asks, Top 5 favorite Switch games of all time. That's a bit extensive. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shorten that to top 3. So my top 3 favorites are at number 3. I switch 2 and 3 around a lot. But I think that number 3 is Pikmin 4. That game is phenomenal. Number two, another code recollection. That game I did not know existed before last September. And just by one playthrough, I am now in love with the game. So, that's number two. Like, one of the best stories I've, I've ever seen in the game. Now, that's just me. I don't think a lot of people like that game. Like, my hot take is that another code recollection is top three Switch games of all time. That's a very hot take. So that's my number two. Number one, common one for a lot of people actually, Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've sunk over 2,000 hours, almost 3,000 hours, I think. Uh, no, 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 maybe like early 2000s. Early 2000, like 2,080 hours into, into Animal Crossing New Horizons. That game, I've played for a little bit too long, but that game is unlike any other. Now, with that said, I do like Animal Crossing New Leaf better on the 3DS. But New Horizons, though, on Switch, any Animal Crossing game on any platform is my favorite game on, on the platform. Even, like, I don't like Animal Crossing Wild World a whole lot. That's my favorite DS game. <laughs> like, like it just, it just, Animal Crossing is everything to me. Favorite Wii game, Animal Crossing City Folk. The only exception is Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival is not my favorite Wii U game, so, but that's a spinoff, right? So that doesn't count. Then, Joseph asks, what do you think about, about a Paper Mario All-Stars game. Do you think it will happen? When do you think it would happen? And what games do you think would be in it? Honestly, I thought that was a real possibility until Paper Mario Thousand Year Door was announced. Because, let's be real, if Paper Mario All-Stars was a thing, you would most definitely want to include Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, right? If you did that, you would probably include 
Paper Mario for N64, you would probably include Thousand Year Door, and you'd probably include Super Paper Mario. Exact same concept as Mario 3D All-Stars. You have, you have one N64 game, you have one GameCube game, and you have one Wii game. I think that, that you follow the exact same concept. So you have uh, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, and then uh, Super Paper Mario. Those are the three that should be in it. And when I first saw the trailer for Thousand Year Door, before it was over, I really thought that was Paper Mario All-Stars. I thought they were going to announce a whole collection. Because I wasn't so sure they would just release Thousand Year Door on its own. Can that game sell off? Can, sorry, can the game sell on its own? Yes, for sure. But I thought they would go all out and put and do that exact thing that I just said, Paper Mario All-Stars. Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, and Super Paper Mario. Didn't happen, but those are the three that I think would be in it. I think the chances, the, the chances of it happening now are next to impossible. You could do a weird thing like where you have the N64 Paper Mario, uh, you would skip Thousand Year Door because it's out on Switch soon. So you would go N64 Paper Mario, you would go Super Paper Mario, and you you know you could do a weird thing where you go Sticker Star, but I don't think that would sell too well. I mean, any sort of Paper Mario All Stars would sell well, but like Sticker Star is kind of like the whole flop of all those games. So I don't know that you would do that, but I think the chances are next to impossible. Because Thousand Year Door is coming out. But, you know, all good stuff. I'm excited for Thousand Year Door. Then Let's Go Gaming 28224 asks Do you think Nintendo will continue to make Mario Maker games every few years? Or do you think Mario Maker 3 will be the last game in the series? Uh, let's check. I, I know the answer. My answer is yes, but, but let's search best selling Nintendo Switch games. Uh, let's see. So, where does Mario Maker rank? Mario Maker is. Lower than I thought, to be honest. So it has sold 8.42 million copies and is the 23rd best selling Switch game. Hmm. I would say they're going to keep doing it. I don't think it'll be an every few year kind of thing. I mean, it, it will be. But I think their motto for it is going to be one per console. So if the Switch somehow lasts three more years without a new console in play, I do not see them making a new Mario Maker. I think it's going to be, okay, we have one for the Wii U, one for 3DS, one for Switch, one for Switch 2. I think that's how it'll be, but do I think that, it, that it'll end with three? I don't think so, because if it launches on, you know, Switch 2 and it has like the Mario Wonder style and, you know, all, all, all the Mario Wonder enemies in there, that's a hit. Making your own Mario Wonder courses with Wonder Seeds, people are going to love that. Or, sorry, uh, Wonder Flowers and all that kind of stuff. People people would love that, right? So, I don't think that it ends anytime soon. But I do see it coming out maybe like a year after Switch 2 releases. Because I imagine, this is just, this is my, my prediction, I imagine they release the next console with a 3D Mario game. So you got to be careful about putting out too much Mario. You know, you don't... In 2017, they released Nintendo themselves. I think put out two Mario games, Mario Kart and Mario Odyssey. You had Mario Rabbids, but that's Ubisoft. I think those were the only two, unless I'm stupid. So with Switch 2, if you launch with 3D Mario, you don't want to put out too much Mario in, in the one year because you can space it out and get more money over time. I think that your Mario Maker 3 comes out in, like, if Switch 2 is 25, I think that comes out in 2026, and that will not be the end. I think they can keep finding ways to improve it, expand on it, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. And then, finally, no name game underscore asks, what do you think the next 99 Battle Royale game should be? We, we've had Tetris, Pac-Man, F-Zero, and Mario. What, what's next? That's a great question. Very, very good, good question. Because I don't think that the, you know, 99 type games will ever die. Because one, they're free. And two, have they ever died? I mean, they've like shut down like Pac-Man and I think, yeah, 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 Pac-Man shut down. But like, dude, if I want to go into an F-099 match right now, I can get into a match like that. So like, it's a very active thing. 
Very active. I would say, because that model I don't think goes away soon. The next game, you can do it with any game, really. Do you know what I want to see? And it might not be free. Mm. My first thought was a Suica game, 99. But the only thing is, how do you run that? Because Suica game, you can play forever. There is no end until you mess up. I mean, as per any game. <laughs> I mean, you know? So, I just wondered, like, if you're placing fruits in Suica game, if you've heard of it, by the way, if you're placing fruits, you probably have all day to make a decision. Unless they do a thing where it's Suica game 99, but you have, like, five seconds to place each fruit, right? And whoever lasts the longest wins. And maybe there's, like, less space. So, in Suica game, you drop fruits and, like, combine it with other fruits to make bigger fruits, right? And there's a big tank to work with. There's a lot of space. If they decrease the space to fill with fruits, and they give you, like, five seconds to drop each fruit in the actual game, you have unlimited time. That's how you can make a Suica game in 99. I think that should be the next one. However, I don't know how you make that game a success because Suica game costs money. Not much money, but money. So it, you couldn't really make that a free thing. But there are a lot of Suica game owners. So maybe you integrate it with the actual game itself. It just wouldn't be as active as like all of those 99 games were totally free. It's harder to do a paid 99 game. Even like Fortnite is free. Like that's how it stays active, you know? I don't know how active a Suica 99 would be if it's even... Because the game's like... The, the, the freaking game is like... Two, it's, it's $2. It's not, not a lot of money. But you still got to pay. There's a barrier there. It's a great idea. Rephrase. It's a good idea, but not great. I would say that. But that is it for the Mario Matter. Now, I know a lot of you heard my question at the beginning. If you didn't listen to the intro, I said, Guys, what is the best selling Nintendo game of all time? I said it in the beginning. I gave you all podcasts to think, and I have the answer for you. If you answer that question with Wii Sports, you would be correct. <laughs> Could you imagine that, like, I said, if you said Mario Odyssey, you would be incorrect. And, like, someone who said it would, would be so upset. Wii Sports sales numbers. Let's check. So, Wii Sports has sold 82.9 million copies. Was the top-selling game of all time. So, I mean, for for Nintendo, right? Not for, you know everyone as a whole but that is it for the mario matter if you did enjoy guys the best way to support the podcast non-financially is to leave us a positive review on spotify or apple Podcasts, wherever you listen we would really appreciate it that is the number one way aside from like being a member to support us so we really do appreciate it. and i'm not gonna sit here and like guys please be members I offer it. You get special episodes. I give you stuff, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna beg you, right? So, the best way, little review takes one minute of your time, if that. To be honest, so we appreciate it. We appreciate uh, <laughs> appreciate. We appreciate your viewership or your uh, li- listenership, rather. Either way, whatever you do, we will see you next Saturday. Uh, also, one thing, guys, I've kind of cooled off on like getting guests on this show because. I really love my solo episodes. I love it, and I, I, I think I think that you all do too. So we'll do guests like here and there probably, but I, I'm kind of slowing down. For a while there, we did it every other week. I want to slow it. Maybe we get a guest on, guest on maybe at the end of this month. I don't know. We'll see. But I love the whole solo thing, so we'll find out. But thank you all so much. I'll see you all next Saturday for even more Nintendo news. And maybe we'll have a big announcement from Nintendo soon for something. Who knows? There's talk of a Direct this month. Do I believe it? No. Could it happen? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see you soon. Talk to you later. Adios.